Americans fell victim to an epidemic of encephalitis lethargica, or sleepy sickness. The disease, which killed millions at the time, causes lesions in the brain. Those who survived sank into a kind of semi-conscious purgatory that imprisoned them for decades. For some, it was a kind of dream world, but others were condemned to tormenting repetitions, like the endless contemplation of two equals two equals two. One patient described how she had to walk around a mental square to seven notes from a Verdi theme. And this would go on for hours and days, wouldn't That's stop. Hell. Mm. This, I think, is what one intuits, that uh, there may indeed be something like a sort of hell. Though he looks like a stray Santa Claus, Oliver Sacks is in fact a voyager in hell. He is a doctor who also writes about the dark continents of human illness. But he writes with such passion and joy, he has drawn millions of people into worlds they might have shunned. Like the world where the victims of sleepy sickness were still floating in emptiness back in the late 1960s. Sachs was a young neurologist at Beth Abraham Hospital in New York. He decided to gather the 80 known patients together, bring them in from the institutions where they had been stored like human furniture. He had heard about an experimental drug called L-DOPA, now used widely on Parkinson's patients. He wondered if L-DOPA might be the miracle which could jolt their brains back into life. So I hesitated, and I hesitated for two years. They'd been put away for, for 40 years, and I didn't know what coming back to the world and coming back to a world which was not their own might mean to them. And then finally my hand was forced because so many of the patients were terribly disabled. Some of them couldn't feed themselves. Some of them were dying. It was 1969, and Sachs was right about L-DOPA. It was like seeing the dead arise. Up they came, up, out of the chairs that had been their prisons. The first feeling was that it was just wonderful to be alive after being dead so long. Esther, so frail she couldn't turn over in bed, walked for the first time in 40 years. And Rose, who went to sleep as a coquette, can be heard off camera singing a body song. If you don't tickle me in the right place, I'll take her off my pet. And then the flapper dances again. When she came to 1969, she kept talking about 1926 and talking about Gershwin and others who were current then. She said, I know it's 1969, I feel it's 26. I know I'm 64. I feel I'm 21. She said, I've been a spectator for the last 43 years. Their skin was eerily young. Faces that have no expression acquire no wrinkles. And they were so greedy for experience, they bravely wrestled with the side effects of the drug. Yet for most, at the beginning, the jerks, the stops, were a small price to pay for life. Lola Hester who is having all sorts of side effects. And, and, and one arm is like this, all sorts of ticking movements, and she looks absolutely tormented by movements, and yet she has, she suddenly smiles, and in that sort of gay, defiant smile, she's saying, you know, I'm, I'm alive, and damn you all, and I'm, I'm still enjoying life. Lillian Ty wrestles with one of the side effects of L-DOPA, an uncontrollable shaking of her head. What's it like doing your hair when your head's shaking like that? Kind of follow it around. Oh, devil putting a part in, though. When the medicine wears off, she sits frozen like a stone. But four times a day, she gets L-Dopa, which she relishes like a cocktail in the desert. She had just taken it before we walked in the door. With the first medication, what was the first new sensation you felt? He moved, he moved, he moved, he moved. You couldn't move. <laughs> With a miracle, yes? Yeah? yeah. In an inexplicable quirk of the brain, L-Dopa causes Lillian to speak in repetitions like a slightly scratched record. Yet when she reads, it stops. You shouldn't go to the hospital to have an And it stops when she sings. 
said, well, if you start with marriage, I can't afford a car. And I'll be damned if I'll be carrying on a bicycle bill for two. And even when she's repeating herself or hurled around by the medication, she recruits you to laugh with her at her quirky, determinedly happy life. <laughs> I didn't realize there would be this, this sort of resurrection in the summer of 69. And I certainly didn't anticipate how grim things might become afterwards. Within a matter of days, it was clear. In some patients, the drug not only triggered strange gestures, but grotesque appetites for sex, for food. And sometimes after eating, to sort of stuff, stuff their fingers on napkins into their mouth and they felt they were losing control then and uh, losing dignity. Some of the patients decided it was better to have dignity in purgatory than life without any pride. Leonard asked to be taken off the medication. Within hours, he returned to his frozen state, bright eyes inside a concrete body. And in the end, Rose, the reawakened flapper, couldn't accept the 64-year-old body trying to dance to those girlhood memories. She said she didn't like our television age, as she called it, and after 10 days of the sort of strange 1926-ish animation, she rather suddenly went back to this trance-like state, and nothing we could do after that sort of had any effect on her. D did they seem failures to you? They seem re realists in, in a way. I mean, there's great dignity great stoicism in this uh, position without, without hope or without regret. I think finally it's a message of, of survival, that one can go through hell and one can be in hell and yet, uh, and yet survive and, and even transcendently as tough and funny and loving life, even if there is no hope in the ordinary sense. Say I love you if you seem to tell a lie. Oliver Sacks and his patients have reminded the world of a devastating story. Starting around 1917, the sleepy sickness epidemic crisscrossed the world, leaving almost five million people dead in its wake. In 1927, it essentially disappeared although many institutions had to be built just to house all the living victims who were left permanently damaged.